Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. So I'm a Necron Cryptek, so what? Be me, a nerd with too much money and too much time on my hands. Played through every FFG 40k RPG and even trudged through the contents of the Wrath and Glory books. Consumed damn near all of the settings lore. From the Horus Heresy series and its subsequent Siege of Terror books. Did heavy reading over the famed Commissars Asiaphus, Gaunt, and even the Ventures of Yerrick. All of the oldest stuff from the Ian Watson Inquisitor anthology to the newest books following the Primaris and the Call just to name a few. Played through both Battlefleet's Gothics, the Dawn of War collections, Mechanicus, Space Marine. I was even enough of an autist to have a few almost fully painted armies, Necrons and a full host of Inari. Need to wake up. Feel extremely cold actually, and everything feels stiff. When I finally take a peek around I find that I'm not alone. Two golden and chrome colored skeletal figures stand to either side of me, their backs to me, they haven't noticed me yet. It takes me a second to identify what the hell they are. The massive fuck off spears, the clunky coffin shaped shields. They're armed with the Necron War Scythe and Dispersion Shield, war gear commonly found on the Lich Good. Immediately I feel my ass clench hard enough to crush coal into fucking diamonds. What kind of nightmare am I in exactly? Everything feels too real to be a dream. Looking around the room it's too elaborate and intricate to be fake. It's an expanse of polished monoliths of blackstone, runic designs inlaid on damn near every surface I look over. I even see the slithering skittering movements of a canoptic wraith followed by a small swarm of scarabs at the very edge of my vision. I want a wrench but I don't have anything to spit up. In fact looking at my own hand I'm met with the metallic digits. Round joints, not a speck of flesh or muscle in sight. I can't help but flex my fingers, they move normally, actually greater than normally, I can move them way back, where a normal finger would have simply snapped. I couldn't help but let out a laugh at the insanity of it all. The pair of Lich Gua turned to face me, both lowering their head and taking a knee. Fuck 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 fuck. My high transmogrifier, you have slumbered for 42 million years. One of the Lich God announced. They were clearly talking to me, and I would need to respond soon. That thought didn't put me at ease. I see. Was all I could come up with saying. The pair seemed to be waiting on me to continue, or maybe move? I held onto the edges of the sarcophagus and heaved myself free. I could hear the click and pop of wires being tugged free from my back. That wasn't settling at all. With a dull clack of metal I made footfall onto the black stone floor. The metallic bristle of my cloak rang behind me. My mind raced, racing to the point that time seemed to slow to a halt. I'm some sort of Necron, a cryptech specializing in transmutation? If memory serves, that was one of the disciplines a cryptech could have, they were found in one of the Death Watch books. Thinking back on it I recall with absolute clarity reading that passage, wait that off. My memory of my life seems damn near perfect now. Added to that I think I'm currently experiencing Necron's chronoscence. It's been a two seconds since I've stepped out of my sarcophagus, which means I have plenty of time to do some hard thinking before I say something and look stupid in front of these lich good. I start rifling through my own mind trying to learn anything useful. Fuck. Reading through everything within my mind is like scrolling through a PDF. Every pertinent piece of info seems to be highlighted as though my mind already knows what I want to ask. I am a cryptic with a discipline in both the arts of transmogrification and to a lesser mastery in the art of technomancy. I belong to a lesser dynasty. Our numbers are dangerously low but enough to be still considered a proper dynasty. We're on the galactic south in the Ultima Segmentum by the looks of it, just at the tail end of one of Maelstrom's tendrils. Five seconds have elapsed since I've stepped out of that cradle. The dynasty served alongside both of the Aurusk dynasty and the Nehilak dynasty quite well by the looks of it. For a fleeting moment the image of the magpie tras flickered across my mind. That fucking magpie is awake right now. My chronosense dialed back to the regular flow of time and I was left before the two lich good. Select a carder of pilots, 
Voidman says I need a component void crew for my ventures. And a host of immortals. Keep that number under 30. I don't wish to draw the ire of the awakened council. I ordered. The lich good nodded in obedience. They left to do their assigned task. I could feel my bald fist twitch. That was genuinely stress inducing. I'm not one for being assertive. But as it seems I'm part of the reigning nobility according to the necrons. I'm going to need to start acting the part, unless other Necrons realize that their hotshot transmuter isn't really up to snuff and they decide to take me out. I tried out the weird interstitial command thing I had read about on a cluster of scarabs at the far end of the immense chamber. It sorta of just felt as though I was running mass messaging the lot of scarabs. They took well to me connecting to them. They halted all movements and awaited orders so that was cool enough. I called the swarm before me. The little things just started floating and skittering towards me. I found that mildly amusing. I took a knee before the scarab swarm, scooping up one of the little fucks up. I really didn't know what to ask of it, I know they could basically make anything if asked. After a good moment I came up with something that. With a new order more or less streamed directly into their little minds, it didn't take them too long before they began to fabricate what I asked of them. It took them little more than a second before they created a scale model of a Necron Shroud class light cruiser. This little mini on one of those little round bases, I always wanted to collect these little things. Before all this I was able to get my hand on a few dozen Battlefleet minis off of eBay for cheap. Until now I never had the chance to get my hands on one of these Shroud ships. I would have smiled if my face wasn't stuck in a slight indifferent expression. I should probably get around to testing my abilities, I should probably summon up my weapon. Fuck, I'm one of those harbingers of transmutation. Meaning my weapon of choice is a fucking harp. I curse under my non-existent breath, my new necron physiology working ahead of me. Simply reaching out my casket shaped harp starts popping into existence atom by atom. It's actually pretty cool to watch it happen. But most of that cool factor is kinda bogged down by the fact I'm summoning a harp. This harp, the harp of dissonance can transmute matter on a molecular level. Reading the Death Watch books it had a neat mention of turning adamantium into something resembling breakaway glass. I suppose defensively it could in theory actually be pretty cool. I contemplated for all of about half a second before I strummed one of the chords. A bass boosted electrical note erupted from the harp. I swear I could hear a sonic boom damn near overload my senses. In the span of a second the sonic pulse had atomized more than half the swarm. The other half of the swarm seemed to absorb the particles and transmute. The necrodermis of their bodies had been alchemized into a gem like green. It kinda looked like a parrot art. Already my own thought processes ran a scan over it, I hadn't really even thought I could do that. Their little frames had been altered now bearing the molecular composition of one of those Cetan phase weapons. It's like a special form of Necrodomus, the living metal that makes up all Necrons. I think these weapons are used by Kalidus Assassin, and a few of the Triarch Praetorians. This could actually really come in handy, but it looks like it requires quite a bit of energy to make. I'll have to look up more uses of this little harp. I tuck away the little battlefleet mini and order the new phase scarabs to follow me, navigating this place shouldn't be too hard. According to my internal records we actually have a few of these shroud class ships. And with it being the 42nd millennia. Wait no that looks good 42 million years. That's well before anything major happened in this setting. By rough estimation that's way before the Imperium. Way before the Great Crusade, the Golden Age of Technology. Hell Slanish hasn't even been murder fucked into existence yet. Meaning the setting isn't entirely fucked up yet. I rushed my out of the chamber deeper into the tomb world. Knowing that this is I have roughly 20 million fucking years before shit hits the fan is heavy. I need to confirm that it's the year 42 million. Fuck this is way before the 40k calendar started. There's a few people I'll need to visit. Probably the first will have to be that magpie Trazin. He is the only one with a wealth of knowledge I can look over. The other option would be speaking with the Awakened Council which I'd prefer not to be anywhere near them. Or the Diviner. No Trazin is a billion times more palatable than the safe scumming bastard. I've been marching for what feels like hours. Three hours actually. 
this metal body doesn't get tired, and it looks like hours can pass by without notice. I think I remember there being a 3 year period of silence between Trazin and collection of cryptics. This is going to take a lot of getting used to. After another 2 hours of marching, and having passed a myriad of scarabs, spiders, and thousands of other canoptic critters I eventually make it into the hangar. Passing by at least 5 dozen of doom scythes and lesser vehicles I arrive to my real prize. The actual real deal, a certified shroud class light cruiser, my very own flagship according to my neural banks. The ultramizer's equation, a bit on the nose but it will serve me well. I quickly boarded my flagship, apparently reacquainting myself with its manifold systems. In a matter of minutes I have engrammatic knowledge of the ship's inner functions, subsystems, along with its specs for void travel. I stream a sliver of my consciousness through the ship, to oversimplify the experience, I feel like I'm programming an Excel grid with my head deep underwater. I begin to rouse the various components to the ship one by one, and before the ship lights up with the arcane sciences of Necron technology. I suppose it helps that I'm a technomancer. Waking and repairing machines are par for the course. I receive a ping, like a discord ping except it hits my mind, that'll take some time to get used to. It's from a lich guard, first cyber gag hat, her cool name. My high transmogrifier, we have assembled a selection of immortals and cryptics at your command. Excellent, I shall arrive to you shortly. I message. Now then the question remains, how the hell will I get to the lich guard? By the looks of it they were more than 6 hours away by foot, and if I'll be honest, I didn't like the idea of wasting time even if it was essentially a scant few seconds in Necron time. Instantly my mind gave me two answers. I could freely travel within the comfort of any number of these vehicles present or I could use the spatial translation that readily allowed fast travel all across the tomb world. I opted to travel in style. The idea of manning one of these vehicles was actually fucking exhilarating. After a little bit of perusing through the rows upon rows of Necron craft I settled 1-1. One one. I mounted a tomb blade and allowed myself to be connected to its systems. I speed off. Leaving the ship hangar, my narrow banks easily chart ways through the expansive facilities of the tomb world. I rip through endless halls, massive chambers of antiquity. Tomb complexes filled with slumbering thousands interred within stasis sarcophagi. The constant turns are sudden, and would have given me whiplash four dozen times over, or outright snapped my neck. But it seems this is more or less natural for me. The sensation of friction, and any loss of inertia made by these on a dime turns are all but lost thanks to the technologies that fill the insides of the tomb blade. I try splitting my consciousness off to run a subroutine. I want to see if I can overclock this thing to move even faster. Eventually I came across a clearing in an upcoming tomb complex, and my lich good duo were waiting for me, I didn't have the time to hotwire this puppy. I stopped within a few feet of them, my momentum halted with only the rush of air hitting them. The lack of inertia is too fun. The various wires and input nods hissing as they were disconnected from me. Let me see now, you've gathered a fine host of warriors for me. I dismounted the tomb blade. I walked over to the collection of assembled necrons. Five cryptic specialized in the astronomical and void based disciplines. Three squads of five immortals, and a squad of ten warriors. This is far less than a skeleton crew but I really don't know what quantities are something worth noting by the awakened council, for now it's time to play it safe with baybone teams to operate. Now then I have some necrons to reanimate. For this trip I only need to partially awaken the gathered Karda. Their own inbuilt engrams would be needed. It took me around an hour of searching through my own Eurobanks to learn the process of reanimation, along with simulating the right a few hundred times. My digits craned at precise angles, enacting the various rites of reanimation. Flickers of bullet fire and electricity suffused my hands. These fires basically encompass complex string of cryptographic orders, this was my logic string that allowed me to awaken the slumbering necrons. I finally begin spreading this bile fire across the host of necron warriors. Their empty eye sockets lighting up with the creeping light of the fire, their inner systems after 42 million years of slumber, once again ready to fight. One by one the warriors and immortals rose from their caskets, 
Bodies overcharged, still burning in the flame of Bile fire. I moved on to the collection of cryptics. They would require a more intimate reawakening. Their minds would need to be awakened in earnest. I am alone on this tomboyod. I need information and truly sharp minds if I'm going to be braving the void of space. I began the rite of reanimation protocols, though to reawaken a cryptic, that process was far more lengthy. At risk of causing untold neural damage I followed every procedure, and crossed my fingers. When the bill fire of reanimation was cast upon the rose much like the other assembled warriors. It had taken me three years in truth to awaken them without a fragment of neural damage, and damn did it feel good. I gave the host of assembled a rough rundown, our heading was the territory of the Nihilak dynasty. I received no arguments. One cryptic, a voidmancer by the name Fanornet made the order to have several canoptic creatures to fill in the space of the ship. I approved the order and even tossed in a pair of canoptic reanimators to assist us. With that the host of warriors and the pair of lich good were instantly translated to the ship by my orders. I ordered several canoptic to rush in to fill up parts of the ship. We'll need their help should we find some destructive force in the void. Or from Trazim. When I finally translated myself into the hangar, I decided to bring along two doom scythes, just for the fun of it. My team of cryptics were already on the bridge, running through the systems and ensuring everything was up to snuff. I couldn't help but notice that most of the cryptex still burned with the bale full of reanimation. I may have actually overdid it. In any case from what a cursory scan over shows, it looks they're working at 150% efficiency. Coolant is cycling normally, their neural matrices however are firing a bit faster than normal. Well, I can't complain. They gave a few sounds off before the hangar doors opened up, revealing unfamiliar stars. For now I'm going to relax on the bridge. My Voidmancer and other Cryptex have already charted the route and really I'm just going to sit back for now. The trip I'm told should take roughly 8 years. Considering I've only been awake 3 years it oddly doesn't feel that bad of a wait. In the meantime I guess I can search my own mind for a bit more info on my dynasty. I belong to the Vokad dynasty, a small dynasty. In the war the heaven and the shattering of the seat and the tomb worlds lost many of its warriors but we retained enough glories that our losses could be overlooked. Our losses have seriously diminished our dynastic powers but having helped bring an end to the outsider we were allowed to remain as a dynasty and not be consumed into a greater dynasty. It's a bit sad. On a brighter note, as of yet no known destroyer cults or instances of the flare virus have shown up anywhere on the tomb world. However roughly 32 immortals, warriors and death marks have awoken within the last 40 million years of being put to sleep once again. Thanks to my own efforts, and that of previous cryptex we have managed to maintain an extensive cache of blackstone and canoptic. What we don't have in warriors we more than quintuple make up for in canoptic creatures. We're rich in resources but in dire straits when it comes to our numbers. I let out a noise resembling a sigh. This dynasty is kind of a bummer. For now I just stare out into the void, watching stars and planets pass along as we move along at sublight speed through this sector. On the first year of the trip I went ahead and compiled every book, audio drama, audio book into transferable data, I like to call it my mega storage. I tried a few test runs before I perfected the means of transferring the data. It's like listening to an audiobook while having the lexiconum open for all the things one wouldn't immediately understand, all the subtext for the context. By year 2 I've perfect the means of manipulating and augmenting my vocal emitter and producing sounds I've stored within my memory. It's a small victory but it's fun. By year 3 my boredom was starting to set in. I may be a necron now, but thanks to me a former human noticing the passage of time is kinda off. I'm going to need to start doing something to fill the time. Halfway through year 3, my lich good and one canoptic scarab have approached me with a proposal for a battlefleet game. They've made a crude version of the video game on a hollow field table. I'm actually pretty impressed by it, I play the game with them. And soon find that my 200 hundred hours of playtime between both battlefleet gothic armada games translate incredibly well to this version. I'm able to root the lich good even if they work to take me down. Agak at one of the lich goods actually has a mind for strategy though, 
he is definitely good at amassing sectors but can't seem to hold them long against me. In other news the Cryptex stopped burning with Bill Fire at the end of their third year. Whatever was going on with the supercharged reanimation is over and they're working with an average capacity. I spent part of the year refining the Battlefleet game to a point it resembled the sequel. It took a solid month to figure out how to have it display colors instead of just being permanently green. I added Elder and Orc simulations for the Lich God to challenge themselves. They seem to enjoy it or as close as expressionless monotone warriors can enjoy something. For now I focused my efforts on testing out the power of Harp of Dissonance. After bombarding the thing with as many augury scans and spectromantic scans I've concluded a few things about it. The 12 strings are calibrated to a precise level of tension, meaning if I find a series of material with similar tension level as the string I can transmute it within a certain range. Playing several strings, while normally inadvisable can miraculously create new alloys, which will require extensive testing. Running through a few thousand simulations I've discovered I can in theory cause nuclear fission. I'm no nuclear scientist but I think I'm not far off from outright making atomic bombs when playing several of my destructive notes together. I've exhausted most safe research I can conduct within the ship, I nearly was voided when I accidentally opened a small section of the wall into a tin adjacent alloy. We're on to year 6 and have traveled beyond the speed light for some time. Cryptek for Norn at the Voidmancer informed me that we were actually ahead of schedule and could arrive halfway through this year. Apparently the overclock reanimation had given them a small bump in her travel algorithms or whatever technobabble that Cryptek was on about. I'm just happy I'll be able to be off this ship. For now I'll sit in my quarters, mostly just transmuting a few scarab hulls into different matter. It's kinda nice learning some of these combos. I gilded one scarab in this golden metal stuff, it's incredibly durable actually it actually looks incredibly nice, downside is it took most of my energy to make. After years of constant moving greater than light speed the ship started whining as we began moving at speeds a white scars space marines could actually enjoy without dying. By the looks of it we're just a few months away from the Nihilak dynasty's territory. There does seem to be miles of space debris around though. Lots of asteroids floating about. It shouldn't be any trouble. I make the order to drive through with some caution. I regret giving that order. As what awaited us was something that would give any ship reason to fear the void. The ship skidded. How? Something had lashed across the underbelly of the ship. Damage warnings blaring to life. Reports were flooding as the damage sustained broke through overloaded our shields. We had a small chunk of the hull that was broken off. Not enough to cause issues but enough to raise concern. Evasive actions. Get me a damn auger of what hit us. I barked out. The ship rushed, weaving and soaring the debris fields. By one turn I caught a glimpse of the bastard that had fucked us. And let out a sound unbefitting a cryptic. We were up against a void kraken. Tendrils sluggishly reached for us. They were massive. A mile long each one at least. This ship was already fucking massive in its own right but this thing was at least 10 miles long. How the fuck does a thing like that exist? Better yet how did it sneak up on us? Thankfully the swarms upon swarms of canoptic creatures are already hard at work trying to unfuck the damage. Warnings blare again, and the ship takes a sudden dive. We had just narrowly avoided a mile wide asteroid from smashing against our rear. The cryptex are feverishly working on getting us out of here. The problem is if we try speeding up we're likely to suddenly plow into Nihilak territory which is exactly what would cause us to appear hostile to one of the most heavily armed dynasties out there. For Nornet whips us around, we get a fucking look at the son of bitches ugly mug. For the briefest of years I was content to actually be in a universe without chaos, dark elder, or tyrannids. That I somehow forgot that occasionally there were worse things in this universe. The Voidmancer pipes up the auger is complete my lord, and a firing solution is almost done. Permission to engage? Engage. I yell. Glyphs light up the window. I can see and hear the ship's weapons array of lightning arcs coming to life. Rivulets of electricity jolt to across the ship as the Kraken closes in, its tendrils reaching for us. I saw an explosive blast blind my singular ocular orb, before everything was consumed in white light. The ship lurched, whipping around violently to one side. 
when my eye cleared I could make out the kraken howling. Not a single sound reached me, all screams were muted in the depths of space. Half of its face had been reduced to molten slag, a set of eyes had been burned out. The thing had managed to whip us off to the side even after getting hit. My lord, we have received significant damage to our right flank. With the beast stunned we can fall back. Get us out of here for Nornet, we have no need to continue fighting. The Ultramizer's equation glided out of the asteroid field. I breathe a sigh of relief as we move out of the asteroid belt, an entirely unnecessary gesture but it calms me. The damage reports come in a bit after, we've lost a large sweep of the rear hull. As we speak an optic wraiths and other machine servants work to repair the damage. The reports that ping my mind tell that from now we'll have to seal off a dozen sections of the ship until they can be sealed off. Light speed is out of the question for at least two weeks. I shouldn't have expected this. For now I relax back upon the command throne. I hold on to my cute little scarab chari, letting it occasionally skitter about as I pet it. After a sluggish two and half months we finally arrived at the perimeter line. I sent out the hail for the Nahilak dynasty. My message is sent off to Trazin with a secondary message to the Sanat chief curator of the galleries of Solemnace. They request a call onto the deck, which I oblige. The magpie himself answers, his smug face blasted across the hollow projection. A cryptic of the Vukla dynasty. To what do I owe the pleasure? His voice makes my non-existent skin crawl. I can't look bad in front of him so I'm going to stroke his ego. Overlord Trazin who is called Infinite, chief archivist of the Solemnace galleries. I bow my head, and take a submissive stance. I have come to you to ask for a tour of the Solemnace galleries, I wish to behold the common heritage of all Necron kind. And to see what myriad of entities and trinkets now litter this galaxy, Trazin crooks his head to the side. I think I actually caught him off guard. A man of culture, I believe I can set aside time for you. It doesn't seem as though you'll be able to travel with that breach in your vessel. He remarked with a hint of smug glee. I shall ferry your ship to a station in my domain and see to it your ship is repaired. The connection was ended. I breathed another sigh. I can only hope he doesn't try and repo my ship. A gag out, ensure the warriors are prepared for combat. I don't believe he will do anything but it's better to be on the safe side. They came in droves. Dozens of fleet craft clamping onto my vessel. Dragging it deeper into his domain. I could sway half the nameless cryptic were anxious. I can't exactly blame them for it. I hold on tight to my scarab. If I get on his good graces I can start using my meter knowledge to my advantage. HM. I cannot recall Trazin having an actual Necron guest at his gallery. This might actually be good. It takes us little time before a smaller craft connects to my ship's hangar. I make sure to be there to meet them, along with my host of warriors. The bastard arrived atop a Necron Catacomb command barge. Not only that but he arrived with a host of over 30 lich good. I quickly give a quick scan over their neural matrices. Good they aren't fully awakened. Just their combat engrams. Cryptic evoke that I never quite caught your name. Trazian announces. A. My chronosense grinds time to a near halt after he asks for my name. I don't fucking know what name this Necron I've overwritten has. I run through my memories for the next several millisecond looking for a name. How did I manage to live for 10 years as a Necron without actually knowing my own name? I find the name buried somewhat deep under thousands upon thousands of esoteric sciences of super chemistry and metallurgy techniques. Underneath all of that I finally find it. A overlord offering a goodbye to me, I don't recall who she is, she's seeing me off as I am interred into my sarcophagus for the next 40 million years. I am Ishka High Transmogrifier of the Vukla Dynasty. I finally answered after 2 seconds of thinking. A pleasure to have you Ishka, now then it seems you've brought your own lich good, there really won't be need for them. He gestured to the 30 around him, all at least partially colored in the fashion of his dynasty. Come Trazin you can. I insist. He leveled his gaze on me, all pretext of friendliness gone. I let out a quiet huff through my vocal emitter, not that it actually mattered. With my hands tied I gave the interstitial command to have my troops fall back. Very good, 
Now then come along my dear high transmogrifier. He said with the slightest bit of smugness. I nodded along and joined him. I watched as this smaller vessel disembarked from my hangar, my crew leaving to ensure the safety of my staff. Transport was quiet. Trizin occasionally looked at me, I think either assessing me and my little scarab's value. Or genuinely excited that a single Necron was actually interested in his galleries. In any case we traveled down to the surface of the world. I had caught glimpses of thousands of raised monolithic structures which served as great gallery houses. Trizin didn't go to sleep when commanded, and instead spent the past 42 million years collecting. I kinda had something something I wanted to ask him actually. Lord Trezin, you wouldn't happen to have a section of your gallery dedicated to the slan? We passed by hundreds of plinths bearing ancient Xenos tech most utterly beyond my comprehension. I saw hundreds of recreations of Xenos battling against one another trapped in hard light holograms captures of their conflict. I saw Rudd Burrow and its denizens perpetually frozen as they were in the middle of digging. I witnessed a fucking family of Jokiro eating banana adjacent fruit under the shade of their strangely crafted ship. I gasped when I saw Rackle feasting down upon a frog faced Xenos beast, I could even see the strange Xenos firing some electrical cannon at one, atomizing another Rackle. Trazin and I did occasionally speak as he presented me the things within the prismatic galleries. I think my recognition of a portion of his galleries quite piqued his interest but I was more stunned than anything to really care at the time. Now I believe you said you wanted to see the slan collection. We will find them in my war in heaven gallery. We passed through a dozen more display cases. I gave up on subtlety as we made our way into the bowels of the gallery. Outright I was speaking the names of the orcoid varieties. I was left speechless as I saw his gargant flanked by not one but a formation of five squiggoths. He seemed particularly proud of it. He was also holding his tongue after I made mention of the distinction between a gork and mork icon emblazoned upon one death dread chassis. I shut up quickly after that. Finally we arrived at the lower levels of the gallery. The war in heaven gallery was a sight to behold. Eldery waging war in ancient armor serving alongside Herculean super orcs. Crocs. I saw Bone Singers erecting a barrier of Wraithbone against a gauze beam fired by a Necron warrior. No not a Necron warrior a mannequin an ancient livery of a Necron, a stand-in for a Necron tip. Trizin was busy talking, and yes I was recording his every word and recording every ounce of detail of the room. I wasn't truly listening. This gallery had everything and so much more than I could have hoped for. When I did eventually turn to look at Trizin, I couldn't actually stand to stare at him but rather at what stood behind him. I saw the last desperate stand of a collection of slan, against a set of mannequins of necrons blasting them with all manner of beams and techno sorcery. They were amphibian like reptile folk, short hunched back things. Their arms were small and veiny, body covered in a slick mucus. Their armor was golden and often plumbed with red streaks of hair, bodies adorned in either furs or scaled pelts of ancient Xenos long long since extinct. Their melee tools looked primitive, but seemed to crackle with electricity that was perpetually frozen in place. I couldn't doubt anything of this universe anymore. I'm 40k and I need to start pulling my weight in this galaxy if I plan to keep living. My eyes finally set down on the Lord of Solemnes. Trezin, this, all of this is just... I felt my words catch at the back of my throat. Overwhelming. I knew you had not slumbered for the past 42 million years but this Trezin has been beyond my wildest expectations. To think you would have, Crocs, Jokiro, Slan, and is that a damn enslaver? I gesture to a sunken and withered insectoid husk. Trezin lets out something approximating a laugh. Quite so cryptic, quite so. You seem to know an awful lot about my gallery. Trezin said. Many of these creatures did not exist before our great slumber. And according to your ship's systems and Cardo you yourself have only recently awoken. Trazin leveled his empathic obliterator to my eye. I somewhat deserve this. Calling the few orcs, the Hrud, a few Jirinxes, and the Rackgull out by name set me up for that. Quite so Trazin, it's true a standard 16 years ago I awoke. I answered. Ten have been spent awakening my troops and sailing the void for this tomb world. 
I came here knowing already a small portion of what was currently available. Trazin scoffed. You say currently. Trazin says. As though you already have some foresight on the future of my gallery. You remind me of a certain astromancer, Cryptic. I am no thrall of that barbarian oricon if that's what you're implying, Trazin. I say with a vile edge. He would smash every relic of old Akron to heritage if it meant he could steal a morsel of power. Trazin was actually taken by surprise by the use of the word barbarian. Yes I have a bit of foresight to your future, and some matters of what your gallery will hold. I admit. You've identified Xenos easily, to an extent I can believe what you say, but... He pauses, turning on his heel. I'd like to know what exactly you came here for. He finally lowers his staff. I came to confirm a few things with my own eye. I admitted. And to make deal with you Trazin. You wish to make a deal with me, fair let me hear it then, Krituk. He doesn't really like my kind, I can tell. Walk with me Trazin, I need to confirm one last thing, I gesture for him to follow me through his gallery. He lets a disgruntled sound but he's interested in what I have to say. We walk along the war in heaven displays. After another half a year of walking I finally came across what I was looking for within his gallery. I began pointing to each article of items within the room. Ancient scrolls that you haven't ever read over, a set of long tar pipes that had at once belonged to the Mephred dynasty, ceramic ritual and still bearing the fingerprints of the long gone Necronte, and this ivory cane bearing the hook beaked god of wisdom. Nearly everything I anticipated to find here, but you are missing one thing in your gallery. Trazin stood in stunned silence for the next five hours. The chamber rumbled lowly. I had an inkling of what was next. Several tomb doors grated open along the length of the walls. One by one Lich Good stepped free of the walls. Let's hear this little deal of yours, shall we? Trazin asked. My systems are cycling hard, I run through scenarios where I don't get gutted or dragged off to the council. I don't have any talent for actual negotiation but I finally came up with what to say. I am aware of the rough location of various artifacts you may wish to add into your gallery, or simply add to your arsenal. I too wish to acquire these items to help renew the strength of my tomb world, and the greater benefit of the Necron as a whole. He sent a quick message to his scarab Cheridotella to make a quick construction. Do you know what a Blackstone Fortress is? I cannot say that I do, why is it that I don't? Trazian admits after 2 hours. I spent that time reading up what lore I had from my time playing through Blackstone Fortress board games, and the Battlefleet Gothic tabletop game. It's not something the ancient texts would tell you. As long as he makes awkward pauses I can actually prepare things to say. I handed off the miniature to Trazin. He began carefully looking over it. I assume you have more to show me than a diorama. I wish to hand over three of them off to the Nehalak dynasty. The rest I wish to claim for myself and to our immortal empire. I drew up a Fars Glyph projection tablet before Trazin displaying an image I saved away in my memory. Trazin's eyes lights up as he takes the tablet. Incredible, and how as you know. I cut him short. Cease all inquiries until after I finish my proposal. I regret saying that immediately after it leaves my mouth. He scoffs and lets me continue living. This massive starship is one amongst many nine to be precise. I have a rough location of most of them but it will require extensive searching and stopping a few of your acquisitions runs for a time. Their ancient technologies can rival entire craft worlds. Armed under our control one could very well squash out any enemies. I showed Trazian a brief glimpse of its destructive power against Imperial fleets from Battlefleet Gothic Armada. You can try and search your records. No doubt you will. But you would not find a single reference or allusion to them in your gallery. You wouldn't be able to find one even for the next 20 million years without my help. Or perhaps you do have something you can pull from your gallery. In any case in exchange for sharing this boon with you. You're going to help me save several tomb worlds. Save? What exactly are we saving them from? Trazin asked. Planet killing solar flares. Decay and a great number of Setan shards. My mind runs through them each as I say them. The Immunus dynasty from the infinite and the divine book. 
The lone cryptic who found his entire Tom world rusted and unable to awaken his world without a great power source, from the Knights of Makrog. The Shard of Zahilash the Potentate, a Setan enslaved and turned used for the Pharos Beacon, who as memory serves also led to several more other beacons, a road map to the largest caches of Blackstone, and so much more Necron science sought to be forever forgotten, from Belisarius called the Great Work. These Star Fortresses, is that truly all you have to offer? The fucking goal of him to ask. One such fortress houses a number of trinkets and zenas from nearly every age. You have full rights to acquire what you see fit from within its depths. I flash Traz in various zenos, and artifacts found within the Blackstone Fortress tabletop. He takes a keen interest in the temporal loop and an ancient zeno gun. But I wish to possess something that cannot be put in one of your stasis chambers. I think over the board game some. The various secret vaults of the fortress, with the ancient so called Augmetics, a brand that marks one and grants them one of 7 9 different marks. I want them all. These terms are agreeable. Trazin encircled me. His lich good started to step back. Who is it you intend to save first? He asked. A cryptic Nehadkor. He is alone on a tomb world unable to bring forth sufficient energy to awaken even one warrior, much less any of his tomb world system. I would suggest we beseech the high metallurgist Quelka to assist us. One of the seated members of the awakened council. Trazin exclaimed. Just so, he will be invaluable to helping me awaken the tomb world, along with revitalizing the rusted necrodermis. It would also let the Awakened Council see us in a more favorable light when we bend the rules in the future. Some of your acquisitions aren't especially seen in a favorable light. I peeked back to the long pipe in one of the displays. Trazin lowered his head with a sigh. Fine. Do you have any more absurd conditions, or can we finally begin our assignment? I rack my mind for a moment. Suddenly recalling something about this world. Would you allow me to see Sanit? Your curator? He tilts his head at that. Why would you wish to meet Sanit? I'd like to see if I could repair his neural matrices. Once more I have an empathic obliterator pointed at my personage. Maybe that was a bit tactless. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. So I'm a Necron Cryptech, so what? Part number 2. I'd be quite careful with your next set of words Cryptech. Trazin spoke with Venom. Trazin's empathic obliterator sparked with dangerous green sparks. My legs are actually quaking. I I mean I would like to see if I could help your curator. I can feel my words get caught in my mouth. I know his short term memory was compromised, if I could in theory repair him. He seemed to consider the idea. But he still hasn't lowered his weapon from my throat. A 40k nerd gets reborn as Necron Cryptek by the name Aishka. His disciplines focus on transmutation and technomancy. He belongs to the Vokad dynasty, made up, a dynasty who is incredibly lacking in numbers. Gathering a collection of warriors and Cryptek's waking them up he had plans to head on out. He had his crew drive him to the Solemnace so he could confirm a few things and also have access to a wide assortment of knowledge. One of his scarabs, Cheridatella, and Lich Gurad, first Scythe Gaghat, made a copy of Battlefleet Gothic on a holotable for him to play since he's been making BFG minis with the help of scarabs. He made it to the Nihilak dynasty after an encounter with a Void Kraken. After meeting with Trazin he asked for a tour which eventually turned into making a deal with him. Now he and Trazin are discussing obtaining the Blackstone Fortresses and saving several Necron Tomb worlds from destruction. Oh and after a recent little comment offering to fix Trazin's curator, Trazin isn't amused with our cryptic. Eventually Trazin gestured to me to start walking. 
I complied at risk of getting destroyed. I don't want to test out reanimating. Plus death sounds like it would hurt. He led me out of his war in heaven gallery. I kept looking around at what was available in his gallery. That did help calm down. Do you truly believe you can repair Sanat? Trazin finally asked after 3 days of silence. With some effort I could probably get his long term memory working. I admit. He eventually led me to what appeared to be some sort of canoptech workshop. The old cryptech was laid down across a black stone table. Instruments my mind instantly recognized as artisan and artificer tools lined various tables. It felt like I was walking into an operating theater. You will be provided every tool at my disposal. I expect results from you cryptech. Right into it then, I didn't expect to be going into the operation right away. I didn't have any choice, I would actually need to fix his mind. I grabbed a necrodermis needle of one of the tables and tore open Sanat's head. The next set of months has spent carefully identifying the degraded path of circuit network of his brain. If it could be called that. Untangling the burnt circuitry from the rest of his brain took the better half a year, even with help from Cherodoteller and the tools at my disposal. I would need to replace it with something that could withstand the ages. I searched through my own neural banks trying to find what parts I could use to fix Sanit. I took a quick run through of the collected footage I had on Trazin's gallery and the solution came to me. Trazin, I'm going to need to take a small piece of your gallery to repair Sanit. What is that you need exactly? He inquired. I need to take a few parts from that Jakaro ship. We return to the family of Stasis trapped Jakaro. Me. Trazin and Canoptech Wraith set to work dismantling the inner computing system of the ship. We gutted the thing, setting aside complex networks of power packs, metallic bulbs of unknown usage, and eventually a part that I believed we needed. We eventually found a series of Euclidean processing nodes that more or less matched what I needed. These bad boys would do the trick, I just need to bury them and connect them into hundreds of different smaller systems and ensure they couldn't decay again. I'd probably need coat them in something. I took a small glance at my scarab. His golden hyper durable gilding gave me an idea. The next five years had been spent simply transmuting more of the gilding material I used on Cheridotella. I feel a bit stupid for not realizing it was Auramite sooner. My scarab and Trazin have been calling it Iskar, which I don't mind. I began the painstaking process of fusing and interweaving the nodes and auramite together. My hands don't get tired but my mind sure is. I'm constantly reciting dozens of metallurgy rituals as the metals bind with one another. Eventually the new neural network is complete. And the hard part of actually adding this to his existing systems starts. I spent years grafting the new neural matrix in with that which previously existed. Tediously fusing them along the previous pathways and finding that I had significantly more than I had intended to use. They were already 273 connected points at this point and all I could do was find ways to integrate the additional systems. All in all I had spent 14 years operating on Sanit. When the operation was complete I reshaped the top portion of his necrodermis death mask. There was a nice auramite plate that connected from where his nasal cavity started and the back of his cranium ended. All that was left to do was to reawaken him. Which I was more than confident I could do. I took a deep breath. Joining my fingers into ancient designs I began the string of algorithm chants a part of the reanimation protocols. Trazin had been watching me intently for the last three years and I didn't want to fuck this up. I dialed back my chronosense. He was stressing me out there was no way I could have even one thing wrong. The rights of reanimation was drawn out for another year, as I ensured I went above and beyond. The ritual orb at my back crackled with electrical discharge and whined from the overuse as I was truly putting everything I had into this one ritual. My fingers burned intensely with a beal fire that threatened to consume me. Having prepared beyond dutifully I pumped everything into the cryptic. Sanit was burning brightly. The light burned white in my ocular. Something in the depths of my consciousness stirred. Something I wasn't entirely aware of. I saw flashes of someone. A withered husk of a person standing over me. No, not standing. But shielding me from the blistering heat of a star. 
My thoughts slipped away from the visions as reality asserted itself and banished the thought before I could process what I had seen. Sanit had arisen now standing on both feet above me, crackling with the belefire green of his world. And crackling with a deep dark purple energy. The Voidmancer was supercharged in the belefire of reanimation. Sanit's one eye stared down at me and then to his overlord Trazin. The shimmering links of essence totems that hung from his shoulders popped and sparked with power. Sanat spoke, his vocal emitter bombing with presence. My lord? I could see he was confused, his systems had been functioning at criminally inefficient levels. He couldn't exactly be considered a cryptic when he couldn't remember if he had already cast his hexes. But now, it was all rushing back to him. His own neural matrices working, no overworked with the excess of energy and memory capacity at his disposal. Trazin spoke up. Sanit. How do you feel? Was all he could bring himself to say. I feel powerful my overlord, as though I could wield all of my faculties to greater efficiencies. In fact. Sanat's entire being dispersed in an instant, the reverberations of electrical discharge rang out. My own mnemonic struggled to identify what that sound was. Cross-referencing it with thousands of memories from my body's past. When I did come to the conclusion I realized that sound had sounded eerily similar to that of when a deathmark opens up their dimensional oubliette. Sanit reappeared beside Strazin with a crackling series of pops. I am operating above capacity my lord. I'm honestly exhausted after that procedure. One of my wraiths pumped me full of the ambient energy he had tucked away. I thanked the wraith and gave it the first name that came to mind. After getting my bearings I looked to Sanat as he was still crackling with energy and the fire. You are a dimensionalist, your focus works much like that of the teeth marks? I asked. Sanat gave a nod before looking back to his lord. I think the pair were having some sort of call that I wasn't privy to. I need a fucking break, it's been like 34 years initially woke up. Be first sigh the gak out, lich good of the Vukla dynasty. For the last 42 million years I and fellow Lich Good Kemtherid have been standing vigil over High Transmogrifier Ishka by order of the Faron. We have been instructed that should he awaken preemptively we are to serve under him unwaveringly until the rest of the dynasty awakens. Without any real surprise the cryptic has indeed awoken ahead of schedule. We are sent off to gather a host of warriors and cryptics. We oblige without question, the workings of the cryptic is not something we should question. Ishka works to bring the warriors to life, his rituals seem to take an exceedingly long time. It also seems he has some sort of resurrection orb of an immense size implanted in his back. Witnessing his reanimation protocols are quite the spectacle. Those awoken by his overly performed ritual burn with power in excess. Brother Kempferet informs through interstitial messaging the orb implanted in his back is where he is drawing forth the excess energy. Quite curious. Was this a boon granted by the Faron? I should not consider such possibilities, they are above my station. Our ship makes way for the Nahilak dynasty. The reasons as to why are beyond me. For now me and my brother remain sentinel besides our ward. One of the Lord Scarabs seems to be trying to commune with us. It shows us a replica of the very ship we are aboard. The Scarab brings up the proposal of a training simulation. Brother Kempferet seems quite amused by it so I relent and approve. After several trials we present it to our lord. Naturally the lord takes well to this simulation, in fact it would appear the cryptic has extensive skill for void combat. He modifies the simulation to include hundreds of scenarios, or threats, and encourages us to practice, clearly he wishes to see if we'll be found wanting. I dive into practicing the simulations. Constantly playing back our lord's tactics and trying to improve. I've spent the past 26 years while our lord has been occupied constantly improving my skill in void base combat. Eventually our lord returns from his meeting with Trazin. One wraith carried him back to the ship. I can see our lord is in deep meditations. I will not disturb him. Instead I try to inform Voidmans of Fanornet of our lord's return. Unfortunately I found her and the other four cryptex also in deep meditations. For now all I can do is watch over my cryptic. And so watch. And I wait. And I still crave more of the simulations the lord has made. Be overlord of Solemnace, Trazin. 
the operation of Sanat was a resounding success. Not only has Sanat's memory been restored, but his own dimensional capabilities have been significantly improved for the time. By Sanat's estimation when this bill fire ends in approximately 10 years his neural matrices will still be operating at 150% efficiency. This cryptic, Aishka, a skilled harbinger of transmogrification, and technomancer. Not only that but he must have greater if not equal divinatory abilities next to that stargazer Oricon. I do believe I will be able to benefit from his foresight if we continue working together. B. Aishka. I've spent the last three years in meditation. Which more or less means I'm getting as close to approximation of sleep as possible. I've mostly used this time to block out any intrusive thoughts and just allowing myself to literally recharge. Oh hey that orb on my back. I've just found that it's some form of resurrection orb matrix. It's more or less four orbs combined into a single orb matrix that would certainly explain why everything is basically Uber cards when I wake them. Something that was installed at the request of the Ferran when Iskza was just a cryptic and not me. Speaking of, I should read up on myself more. Or is that just called remembering? I was only 24 in my old life and I've already lived another 36 just as a Necron. Kinda spooky to think about. I try to start remembering things that this cryptic has in his memories. He seemed a bit eccentric in the way that all cryptics are. He apparently had a collection of all sorts of materials back at the tomb world. It kinda reminds me of a dragon's horde. Some of the metals would be nice to test out. Oh yeah there was those two split seconds of flashbacks I haven't had the time to process. I can't seem to find where in my memories they are. It's just the edge of my consciousness just out of reach. I got to very very momentarily see some overlord lady. And some necrative. I'm not sure what triggered those buried memories but I'd like to know more about them. I get a ping from Trazin. It looks like he's ready to talk again. I head to the bridge of the ship interrupting the meditations of every cryptic on deck. I have Trazin's face projected up front on a Fars glyph panel. I take it you've rested well cryptic? Trazin opened with. I have, though it wasn't easy knowing that you had already acquired one third of my ship's supply of blackstone. I snapped back. Ah. Was all he could say. Anyways the blackstone doesn't matter. What does matter is our next steps. I need a powerful catalyst if we're going to wake an entire tombolod. This venture could very well take a century and some change even with the help of the high metallurgist. Trazian was having Sam prepare all the resources we needed for this venture. He would be getting a beating set up with the awakened council to get the green light on this operation. The details went over involved Sanat and I constructing Necron dimensional gates between both our dynasties for ease of transit and communication between our worlds. Sanat was also to prepare an additional gate on my tomb world. We would be using this to evacuate what restored Necrons we could find on that world. This was going to be a lengthy process. 8 years to get home. 12 years to prepare resources. 25 to get the gates set up and at least 68 before Trazin calls the Awakened Council to see what they think on the matter. The return trip was quiet. The Void Kraken was nowhere to be seen. After seeing we were safe we jumped beyond light speed. When I tried to challenge Agaklet to a match of Battlefleet Gothic I got utterly obliterated. He lulled me into thinking I was having a good start. After 25 different rounds I admitted defeat to him. I literally can't beat him anymore. He plays like he's some world ranked champion, he doesn't gloat out loud but there is some BM going on. Did he really just spend 20 plus years training to beat me in BFG2? We finally do return into our small section of territory. When the ship touches down and I command the cryptex to pull up existing void maps on our records. I send them off to record as much information and make a comprehensive map. In the future I'm going to need a full map of everything. I have a lot of the maps tucked away in my head since I've studied up on where each faction is located. But now I'm going to need to see maps with actual measurements and not just lore art. Pulling up my own maps I narrow down on where our territory sits. And boy is it a fucking travesty. I made way for my own quarters, I let Chari off my shoulder as I stepped in. Sprawling across dozens of surfaces were Fars Glyph tablets. 
Variant designs for the several categories of Canoptic constructs were etched onto their surfaces. Some of the designs had large X marks covering up a new design of spider, wraith, or some sort amalgam of both. One tablet did not show one strange Canoptic design. Instead I saw a tom blade that had been upgraded to a weapons platform. For some reason looking at that made my head twitch. Why was all this in my quarters? I'm just a cryptic right? Transmutation and technomancy the two underrepresented disciplines because they're kinda trash? Why would you need to transmute anything when you're already using the best metal in all the galaxy? And technomancy should only be used for fixing and strengthening tech, right? My own neural matrices fire unsuccessfully and cycling logic chains fail. What am I thinking? It's my brain that's failing right, not metal and circuits. This is just a pounding headache. I walk deeper into the room. I knock some books, fuzz glyph tablets, as I head deeper into my room. I came here to check on my collection of metallic paints, sedimentary cash, right? I open one of the cabinets and look over what I have. I pull up all the spray cans of citadel paint, unrefined ores, out. I lift up a large can of lead butcher spray, armor plus alloy, and give it a quick shake. This would be good as a base. Tossing up one can into the air and catching it, it's a can of Mephiston Red, Francian Composite. Getting low on you buddy. I pull out another two cans, Runelord Brass, Necrodermis Ingot, and Chaos Black, Positively Warp Charged Blackstone Bar Warning Malfunction Deed. I got tired and just started pulling most of them up without consideration. Xandri Dust, Cultranium 100% Purity, Munitorum Varnish, Plasma Essence Plate, Grey Seer, Refined Plutonium, Death Guard Green, Enriched Uranium, Macrog Blue, Inert Phase Iron Totem, Mechanicus Standard Grey, Adamantine Bullion. Huh no Retributor Armor, oh hey at least I have this bit of Wraithbone. As I reach into one cabinet I feel my headache vanish entirely, it was probably nothing. I pulled up a weird horn shaped length of this wraithbone substance. It sits nicely when I place it next to all the metals and weird xeno materials. All these would look particularly interesting to run tests on. Particularly this bit of wraithbone. Some master artisans amongst the elders are able to weave this stuff between even molecules. I wonder if I can replicate that myself. I'm no bonasina but as a transmuter surely there is enough overlap in skills. I try altering its shape, and to my immediate disappointment the material simply cracks under the pressure sending shard stabbing harmlessly into my necrodermis frame. Maybe not a good idea to keep messing with it. I'll move on to other experiments. I walk back to the center of the room, away from the metals. No idea how all these fuzz glyph tablets were somehow all knocked down. Well picking up one I might as well try and see about getting something done while I have a free time. I check out one of the tablets and look over a design for a possible variant pattern of wraiths. Two designs for a new wraith variant. A Canoptex Scorpioid, and its complement pair of Canoptex Scorpets. It was a large Canoptex unit armed with hyperface thresher claws, a phase shifter and a particle shredder. And two smaller units also wielding hyperface thresher's claws, a phase shifter and a particle caster. The pattern was never finished. So I've decided to finish what this old cryptic couldn't on his own. I called Duracell into additional wraiths into my chambers. Surprisingly it seems no construct can enter into this chamber without express permission. Quite literally unable to phase into the room either. In any case I get to work rep opposing Duracell and his allies. It's a long process of constantly dismantling them, making improvements and hotfixes to the destabilization matrix due to the extra mass and non-standard parts. Keeping the electromagnetic field coils from not burning out was a problem. But it seems transmuting and adding an auramite is going to just be a recurring fix for getting things to work. All in all a fun 7 year project to make. While that was a fun pet project it will have its uses in the long term. When we finally reach precipice these hyperface thresher's claws will be useful for gathering materials and carving through blackstone. Currently these three are the original patterns and are still technically in the testing phase. Once I see them in the field a bit, I'll use that data to make improvements before mass producing them. 
Actually it wouldn't be a bad idea to also use them for harvesting blackstone or deposits. Oh yeah it's all coming together. Chari immediately turns to me. I think this little scarab is recognizing when I start making references. I instruct Chari to watch over Duracell and his two underlings, now affectionately named double AAs. Chari will be gathering information for me. In the meantime I suppose I start up on practice up on my combat routines. This is a dangerous galaxy so it wouldn't hurt to actually be competent in battle. After leaving my lab and locking up, I summon Lich Good Agakhat. Agakhat, I'm going to need your assistance with something. He immediately takes a knee. I am at your command cryptic. He announces. Agakhat moved to an empty chamber so we could do a bit of sparring. I'm going in with just my harp. And it's about time I actually run through what my harp does beyond sitting pretty on my hip and making tiny strands of auramite. As I've said before it has 12 different strings. Each string is calibrated to a certain tension level. I haven't been using it for its intended design and instead been remixing the power of the chords to make new things. It can do so much more than create and destroy. So let me just run through what each chord does. The Architects chord. This chord enables one to transmute blackstone into an amorphous making it malleable and better suited for designing structures. The chord of entropy. The note released from this chord is the most commonly used in combat. It will rapidly dissolve molecular bonds destroying its stability. The dissonance chord. When played the molecular structure of most organic life forms is rapidly transmuted into gas. The geomancer's chord. When struck the note will rapidly destabilize sediment into a slurry of molten slag, when strummed it can do the reverse and transmute sediment into crystalline substances. God Shattering Chord, made from the fractal seat and shard of the deceiver's essence, when this chord it struck it destabilizes and wounds the very being of the loathsome Cetan. The Iconoclast Chord, made from a fractal of what could be presumed the outsider. This note temporarily transmutes the necrodermis into the cetan phase necrodermis. Such use of the string is incredibly dangerous and immensely draining. The metallurgist chord. When played metals of particularly dense molecular composition will expand, heat and feverishly bond with any surrounding matter, instantly seeking to transmute into something new. The plasmancer's condit chord. This core draws in all ambient energy to suddenly cluster together and transmute into small floating motes of orbs of volatile and unknown masses, effectively making random electrical or plasma mines floating in the air. The fortification cord. This cord rapidly expands out molecules of a surface. This makes its target rise out, before slamming the molecules forcefully together. Often this formation results in particularly dense barriers to hide behind. The induction cord. When strummed the chord rips energy from all caught in the sonic cone. It pairs exceedingly in conjunction with the plasmancer's condic chord. The waveform chord. When struck overcharges steady streams of power into surges of immense overcharges necron technology and units. It needs a steady power source from the resurrection orb matrix to not make necron units go critical. The empiric chord. This one was strange. It had its own microstasis feel to ensure it was inert until it was to be used. All I know about is that it's a positively warp charge black stone cord. What exactly that means in terms of usage is unknown. I couldn't begin to comprehend how this cryptic managed all this power. As far as my records indicate he wasn't supposed to be this impressive. Then again searching through his own neural matrices he wasn't even supposed to be that good of a technomancer. The disconnect and the way things have been a little bit confusing. Rural is a great app available on the Apple and Google Play Store as well as desktop for creating beautiful 8-bit character art. The app has 14 supported races, 150 plus weapons, 400 plus armor pieces for you to mix and match, 20 plus mini bases. There is that much to work from I was able to make Cold Steel the Hedgehog, the God Emperor of Mankind, Pepe and they are always adding more artwork. The app also has a character sheet to help keep track of everything during games. And if that wasn't enough you can play about with the app for free with limited artwork. So go ahead check it out and if you decide to buy the app use promo code NICKBEDIA for 10% off and it lets them know we sent you. It's a great sponsor and a great app and we hope you guys go ahead and check it. But let's get back to the video. 
So I'm a Necron Cryptek. So what? Part number 3. Agakad has a lich good armed himself with the classic war scythe, a staple for those of his sentinel order. He spoke up first. I thank you my lord, for allowing me to demonstrate to you why I was selected to be your protector. Oh he's gonna shit mix me entirely. Let us commence my lord. With no confidence I say yes, let's. He doesn't waste time as he starts moving to encircle me. I can't help but try to do the same, though he simply moves faster than me. Our boy Ishka is under a momentary death threat from Trazin for even bringing up fixing Sanat's degraded brain. He relents and lets our cryptic do the surgery on his curator, and with a lot of luck and Oramite duct tape he actually manages to fix and overclock Sanat's brain. Afterwards Trazin and our cryptic successfully hash out a plan on how to save one of the first Tom world on the list. Trazim needs a lot of time to prepare so our cryptic heads back home. Ishka had a little bit of time to reflect on how 36 years had passed and more and more he was noticing little blips in his Necron memories. When he got back to the cryptic's lab on his tomb world Anon had a major mental malfunction unable to distinguish his old life from current events as seeing some weird variant pattern fucked with his head. When picking up Wraithbone and not mistaking it for Riathbone paint of the same name. His mind suddenly fixed the issue and made him forget he was even going crazy for a solid minute. Ishka eventually decided to give accursed designs a shot and managed to build off of them and make a new Canoptech machine using the patented Iskaraka Oramite to go ahead and make the first prototype. After that Anon wanted to test his metal against his Lich Gullet, one who is considered to be a named unit. Dialing my chronosons to a near stop, I take in a mouthful of air and strike the architect's chord. With a sound resembling an electric guitar if a sonic cone blasts forth. I see the exact moment as Agaklet tries to push off the ground. The sonic boom skidding across the floor with a blue electrical crackle. Where the sonically electrical sparks touch down, I see the black stone floor become a black slag. With that I dialed back to the regular flow of time. Which was a mistake. The Blackstone couldn't transmute fast enough to keep up with his movements. In a fifth of a second he had already leaped forward, feet a centimeter more off the ground. He swung the scythe down diagonally at me. Even as my chronosons started to wind back to life I couldn't do much in the way beyond falling backwards in painfully slow microseconds. I helplessly watched as he sliced just below my jaw. I wanted to cry out in pain but couldn't. Each agonizing moment of pain dragged out with my lengthier perception of time. The war scythe crackled with electrical surges, which tried to cook and fry my systems. I saw my chin and the decorative essence totem false beard slowly go flying in the carried motion of his scythe. His grip loosened on the scythe's length, and made a minor shift in the small of his hand. He was turning the war scythe to try and get another cut into me. I couldn't let that happen. I reshaped the necrodermis at the tip of my index finger that was slowly already aiming to hit a cord. My now spiked digit stuck the cord of entropy. In the tenth of the span of a second, the reverberating sonic blast impacted his torso center mass. I watched as his chest began to gradually protrude in pangs of instability, it was like his living metal had become a ferrofluid. This didn't halt his assault in the slightest, as he had managed to flip his war scythe in that time. His war scythe caught at my intestinal cabling and I received half a dozen warnings on my ocular which I instantly banished. I felt cables tear, tubes of coolant rupture, spraying vital fluids and, worst was when I felt my chest frame rend as his war scythe broke free from my chest cavity. How is it his chronoson surpassing mine? He once more tries to flip his blade again but I'll be damned if I let him get his third strike in. My extended digit catches on the string and rips down the induction cord. A gag had sparks, as suddenly all of his energy banks sputter for a fraction of a moment, the energy tears free of him floating back as ambient energy. I use this moment to fling myself off to the left. His war scythe only managed to dent one of the essence plates on my cape. As I slowly fell back I struck the the fortification cord. A weak sludge of black stone sprouts between us before suddenly hardening into a solid wall. I could already hear him shred through half of it. I let normal time take me. I roll in a tumbling mess of clattering metal plates and clinking essence totems. Rising back to my feet. 
I turn my harp to face myself. A Gakut steps out from behind the black stone wall. As he takes a rushed step to me the upper half of the wall falls back, a massive gash bore into its wall face. My pointer and pinky finger hovered two separate chords, I wasn't sure which to test out first. I was feeling a bit better, the living metal was already repairing the split in my chest. My own internal gut wounds were fixing themselves, and by the looks of it so was a Gakut's. He dashed forward, bringing the war scythe down on my head. Even with his greater chronosense I had already managed to hit both chords. Wait did I just hit both chords? I only meant to hit one. My body was violently revitalized and charged up with something far greater than what Samut had received. The two notes that had hit had been the, the iconoclast chord the, the waveform chord. I felt every iota of my being cook, overheating to critical levels. No logic chains could, or auger sweeps could be pulled for during the pike a second after the combined sonic reverberation struck my body. The resurrection orb matrix at my back soothed me another pike a second later. My body was briefly transmuted to match the composition of the fractal shards of the outsider that inhabited the iconoclast's cord. I was likened to a Cetan star god. I was literally blinded in my power. I hadn't even noticed when a gaklet had cut straight through my spinal column seconds later. The strands of light that make up are being undestroyed by the petty cut. One second has elapsed. The lich god is sputtering, his words are meaningless to me. Two seconds have elapsed. I look to the hallways. Every canoptic construct within five sectors of this room will begin swarming this chamber. I am seen as a rogue Cetan, my current existence cannot be accepted. For all intensive purposes I am, my very being has replicated the outsider for a fleeting set of seconds. I have consumed all ambient energy in that of my resurrection orb matrix, it isn't enough to keep this form. Three seconds elapsed before my body collapsed releasing an awakening cascade event. Need to wake up. Feel extremely cold actually, and everything feels stiff. When I finally take a peek around I find that I'm not alone. Two golden and chrome colored skeletal figures stand to either side of me, their backs to me, they haven't noticed me yet. It takes me a second to identify what the hell they are. The massive fuck off spears. The clunky coffin shaped shields. They're armed with the Necron war scythes and dispersion shields, war gear commonly found on the Lich Good. I feel like throwing up. A gag hat, how long have I been out of commission? I ask. The Lich Goods turn to me, both kneeling and bowing their heads. I really couldn't give a single shit about Necron custom right now. My lord, you have been slumbered for only a few days. A gag hat answers. He hesitated. Wanting to say something more. Out with it. I snapped. When you. 387 warriors, 232 immortals, 91 death mercs, and 31 lich good have been awoken when you. Transmuted yourself my lord. I take a deep breath and lay quiet in my sarcophagus for the next 10 hours. At the elven hour mark I'm greeted by one of the death marks that were awoken. Is. Is he even allowed to be in these chambers? He asks me about the surface world. I haven't bothered to learn things about our tomb world beyond cursory info. I have not, why don't you go ahead and gather the other death marks and create a full topographical map of the surface. I'm sure you can find some organic creatures you can hunt along the way. I bullshit my way through the conversation, I'm still burnt out from the whole Cetan incident. Hold up did he just call me Ishi? Be me Oricon. Currently in the service to the slumbering Sortek dynasty. Currently I have occupied myself in the Zathoth's harmonious sphere, where time flowing within the sphere has been significantly altered. Equating 100 years of studying to only 3 years. I had cast my astral algorithm out of my physical body, for I needed to conduct extensive research. I made my way to the etheric library. I would be reading over hundreds of digitally recorded data scrolls from Cryptex long past. The first century had yielded multiple small victories in the pursuit of astrological studies. I had discovered several hidden hexagrampic sigils which should assist when casting my divinatory screes. By the second century I moved on to turning the various theorems I had gained in the previous century into practice.
with splayed digits at precise angles. I completed several new metal rituals and continued. I simultaneously spoke the algorithm chants, letting the verbal emitter stored within my wickering tail to complete several sets of incantations. With my free hand holding the staff of the tomorrow I drew hexagonal zodiacs of my own devising. I observed the digital rendered star charts, seeing minor zodiacs and celestial formations, and adjusted my alignment a few tenths of a centimeter. This was what made the astromancer discipline such a difficult one to follow, so many precise and intricate esoteric bit of lore needed to follow. I cast my zodiac. And I found it failed. Not by my own designs however. I cursed and repeated the extensive process once more, this time tweaking the positioning of a certain set of celestial bodies on the digital map. Failure. Again I worked to alter it once more. Failure. I tried dozens of times over and over. Before something caught my attention, an anomaly on the galactic west of my current footing. The birth of a star. Before I could take any note of it, I found the fledgling wink out. Three seconds had hardly passed on the outside. I had taken an extensive time within in this fear to all those rituals. What could have happened out there in such a span of time? B. San, chief curator of the Solemnace galleries and a dimensionalist cryptic. I have been tasked by Overlord Trazin and my exalted cryptic Ishka to make preparations for their mutual journey. Several servants have reanimated for this venture. 80 warriors, 20 immortals, 30 lich good have been reanimated, they will not remember being roused from their slumber. As for the various machines and transports. 2 canoptic reanimators, 12 canoptic wraiths, 4 canoptic scarab swarms. Two ghost sarks and finally a doom scythe have prepared. All have been loaded within Lord Trazin's ship the Lord of Antiquity. This is different from his usual acquisition party. High transmogrifier Ishka has requisitioned the remains of the Jacaro vessel to be added to the list of supplies. Odd but Lord Trazin approved, a bit out of character for my overlord. He also asked that jewelry worn by one of the youngest Jacaro families be added. The overlord approved with a chuckle. I dare not inquire as to why. Other such requisitions request various metals and radioactive minerals. I could only assume for transmutation. I heard mention of something about a cake being made, I am unfamiliar with the word. In other news I set about the taxing process of tearing a rift in reality for a dimensional gateway. I have truly been blessed by Aishka. To me the very makings of the fabric of space-time have become paper thin to my superior power. Tearing a stable rift and binding it to a blackstone gate is a paltry effort. The gate's construction only takes me 15 years instead of 25. By the end of it, I am no longer filled with the belefire the cryptic had bathed me in. I approve the portal keying and various coordinated given to me by the cryptic. And open the gate to one of the Votek dynasty's tomb worlds. Be Ferak Osuaria of the Rytak dynasty. And also a member of the Awakened Council. Currently I am on the tomb world of Bakira, investigating a small anomaly. Several days ago an astromancy ritual I had done on the loathsome Kaira dynasty ended in a catastrophic disaster. The cryptics babbled on about a new star, a Cetan fractal and all manner of cryptic nonsense. What was so disastrous was the destruction of several astromancy artifacts being damaged or outright destroyed. One of the cryptics outright died and had to be reanimated. The damage sustained from this however when he returned it was found that the heat death burnt out several of his neural matrices. Execution of Phileas of the Triarch Praetorians was sent out to investigate, given a list of several tomb worlds that were around the section of space where this new star was. Be me the damn reincarnate now overriding the cryptic Ishka. So after the whole turning into a Cetan incident. And reawakening loads of Necron's memories, didn't even know that was possible. I got to work on damage control. I had to ensure that every single canoptic construct removed the alert of a rogue Cetan. I'm nowhere near stupid enough to let the information circulate. I don't want Oricon breathing down my neck. Better yet the Awakened Council may have questions if they find out, these are better to avoid now than deal with them now. Finally I get serious for the expedition up ahead. I check on my correspondence with Sanit. He's given me instruction for getting one of our existing portals ready for him. 
It's miles worth of very fucking precise instructions I get why he said it would take 25 years set up. Since the timetable was that it would take him 12 years to prepare supplies I had 12 years of free time, 7 of which were spent making the two patterns of scorpioids. I guess I can have my canoptic constructs just fill up energy for the mission. And as much necrodermis as we can spare for this effort. With that I began the several year effort to set up the, totally not a webway gate, dimensional gate. Sanat finishes ahead of schedule, even though I had a head start of 5 years. The project took 25 years, 5 of which Sanat was just waiting on me to wrap up. Well we eventually have linked up both of our worlds together. Dimensional transmission to the world of Solemnace is now possible. Oh shit I unlocked fast travel to Trazin's fucking gallery I realize. Trazin was a bit upset that we finished up early. He was in the middle of an acquisition run on some Xeno world that I really didn't care about at the moment. He had to cut his heist down in order to prepare his case to the Awakened Council. I suggested that if for whatever reason he needed a dynastic representative that he pushed for Overlord Vox. I had heavens know how much time before Trazin would go off and have a beating with the council so I'd just have to busy myself. I finally decided to check up on the host of Cryptex. A few years back I sent them off to make me a comprehensive star map. What I received was an entire chamber dedicated to displaying a star map of the greater galaxy, rendered in hard light hologram charts. Kinda reminded me of Tony Stark's digital blueprints from all the MCU movies. All of the cryptex seem to be seated upon floating diadems, constantly making smell changes and adding more stars, factoring in gravity, and dozens of other bits of necessary alterations. I was surprised to find quite a nice section of the Ultima Segmentum was filled out, the gothic sector and a few dozen surrounding areas were empty but this was good enough. The veiled region to our galactic south held near nothing in our own stores of knowledge, which was fair. The region up north was. Patchy, we had the slightest bit more info on certain sectors, but nothing useful, just a bunch of space that would need to be investigated at a later time. Looking closer at the map I noticed something about our territory. Is that? We're not that far from. Nocturne aren't we? I hadn't realized it until now, but we are 5 star systems over from Vulcan's home world of Nocturne, which is only negligible traveling time. Not even that many months of travel if I'll be honest. Thinking back on it Nocturne, it actually has a lot of metals that I'd love to harvest. My cryptic looked up at me in slight confusion. Ah I apologize, you see I think I have just found a world which might be of some use to me. Fununat piped up I am glad you might find use for the work we so diligently do my lord. She sounded a bit clipped, more like she didn't want me here. I'm just going to ignore that for now. She and Nocturne can wait for now. I summoned up Chari to my aid, I kinda wanted to pull a slight flex on these cryptics. And a chance to make more minis if I'll be honest. When he eventually did arrive I gave them a quick interstitial data pulse. Stepping onto a free floating diadem I directed Chari onto the table. Chari weaved blackstone minis in the shape of Gamma Swark Shop Webway Gate. I had 12 of the gates placed onto the map. Just the nearest ones in the Ultima Segmentum. My extensive study into reading nearly every fucking scrap of Eldery Codex, cameo in Imperium books, and audio drama pays off. For Nornette crushes the guard rail as she watches me, the room goes silent. Lord, am I to believe you know entryways into the Eldery webway? Her voice trembles ever so slightly. I can't tell what if she's made or if she's excited. I give a slow nod to her. To an extent, some of these will need to be checked up on. Along with this, there will be some minor inaccuracies you see. I feel like hot shit actually. Is that so? Someone else's voice rung from behind me, an unfamiliar one at that. When I turned to see who it was, I was met by a triarch Praetorian looming over me. The warrior tapping her lipless death mask. All my systems sputter and stop, I would have stopped breathing had still lungs. XE. Oh Executioner Phileas. I say in a shaken voice. Curious. The Executioner moved uncomfortably close to my face. I reeled my head back, unable to look directly at her. I felt like a turtle ducking back to the safety of its shell. I had a few. Inquiries I wished to present you with. 
Her voice sent goosebumps across the surface of my arms. She had a taloned index finger trail along the bladed face of her relic execution scythe. The skid of metal against atom rending phase weaponry filled me with a sense of dread I didn't know I could still feel. You do seem to be quite aware of many things, come with me. She stepped towards, and instantly started to follow. She stepped into a lengthy chamber, I had not entered into the chamber myself before. It was structured in such a way that at a glance it may be seen as an amphitheater, a place in which the reigning lords would discuss matters of political and economical matters, or in rare cases. Hold court. I murmured to myself. The Praetorian had remained awake for all of these 42 million years for the express reason to ensure that every single Necron upon on every tomb world across the hundreds of thousands worlds in the Immortal Empire still adhered to the ruling decrees laid out by the now deceased Necronta race. I didn't fucking have any sort of law book on what laws I may or may not have broken. Before I came here I made visits to the Aurus Gubernastes territory to see if they had perhaps found ill of a star's destruction. One could imagine my surprise when I found they had not used star killing methods in several millennia. Which brings me to this very moment. How is it that a one awakened cryptic managed to birth and kill a star in the span of 3 seconds? I I I oh I oh. My vocal emitter failed no less than 36 times trying to make a coherent sentence, instead I'm making babbling sounds. I can feel the spaghetti overflowing from my pockets. Oh I oh diaris is how I can 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 explain. I nervously chortled as I felt myself shrink before the murder machine. She raised her scythe by its haft, dropping it repeatedly against her palm. Was this some sort of intimidation tactic or was she just bored? I didn't want to know. Then enlighten me, Cryptek. How did you manage such a feat? Spaghetti on full display, ass about to get on a new one. T.Y.U. here you see. Halfway through my spaghetti fest, I dialed my chronosons to formulate a quick logic chain. If I tell her the entire truth then I will stand most likely trial for unknown charges relating. What the fuck that train of thought ended to abruptly. Fuck I need to hurry and think of something to tell this crazy Praetorian if I want to live. Wait, that's it. She's a moth of fucking Praetorian. Meaning she would have already investigated the particulars of the case. She already said she checked on the celestial orrery. She also managed to sneak past all of our defenses and enter several sublevels deep into the tomb world into a room full of the sharpest minds the Necron faction has to offer. She's likely been over the entire tomb world maybe even interviewed and or checked the minds of all the full awoken Necrons. I've got an ace up my sleeve now. I let the normal flow of time take root, only half a second had actually passed while I was thinking. In my attempts to further my studies I awoke 741 necrons ahead of schedule by 18 million. I finally admitted. Execution of Phileas didn't lose a second pressing her relic scythe to my throat. She didn't cut into me, but kept her weapon came within a fraction of a centimeter away from simply rending my neck. That is quite dire claim cryptic. I hope you understand reanimating even 30 lich gourd would have put you into trouble but to openly admit to awakening 741 of the dynasty's legions will have dire consequences. She took a pause as if she was about to say something further but I stepped in before she could continue to berate me. I said I awoke them and did not reanimate them. Her voice became venomous. She also wanted to see my head roll at her feet. Do you know what untold neural damage you might have caused? None, as you have no doubt already investigated. 741 sons and daughters of the Immortal Empire awoke simultaneously without any damage to be spoken of. And any Necron above that of a warrior awoke to find their minds partially restored to them. Her body went rigid, so I kept on. I was conducting experiments well within my rights as a cryptic. When I unintentionally released a mass awakening event which I shall now refer to as... The Resonance Cascade event. I had regained what little confidence I had now. What do your laws state about restoring the minds and personalities of 232 immortals, 91 death mercs, and 31 lich goods? 387 warriors now imitate actions of the flesh time, little reveries only the organic necronta could indulge in. She stepped back, I could the wrist that held the blade to my throat twitch. She knew everything I had said was true, 
her mind was just slowly piecing the puzzle pieces into their place. Phileas had lowered her scythe in deep pondering. I let out a breath of relief. It calms me when I make that human gesture. She remained quiet for the next hour for some shards forsaken reason. I used this time to stop my legs from shaking and coming up with what to say next. It actually might be a good idea to prepare for if and when she asks me why I have knowledge on an elder webway. I think I can make a blanket statement of saying I'm also an astromancer like the diviner when it comes to any meter knowledge slip ups. She finally pipes up. Upon review there has not been any legal stipulations that find your actions worthy of execution. This is simply unprecedented. However. However. I can't help but wonder as to what schemes are. What are you planning cryptic? That was slightly unexpected. I lean my head forward, almost bowing. I have the foresight to correct the way things are heading. But. Even if I tell you what schemes I have, I don't believe you would listen to me. She lets out an annoyed sound. So you two are a diviner, why is it you believe I won't listen? I let out a laugh. The last time someone with foresight told you of what horrors await us he was shunned, disregarded and our whole race was dragged into the flames of biotransference. Execution of Phileas left after that, she and I had a private dialogue for a brief moment via interstitial messaging. After she leaves the planet I get a flood of reports of various canoptic constructs that inform me of the presence of legions of Triarch Praetorians scattered across the world leaving en masse. Whatever override restraints placed on my constructs and legions of warriors was removed. I get the feeling that won't be the last time I see her. I let Chari move about freely and I took a stroll through the tomb world. More time to mill about. I think it'll take a few years to just relax. I head off to an unused chamber and have several canoptech swarms build the layout of my old living room out of blackstone. I start missing my home. A canoptech scarab came into my home through one of the open windows. He started dropping a minis near me. Weird ones of alien creatures, some of the death marks occasionally pinged me images of these things. It was a nice little distraction. I started sending him various GW and Forge world models I liked and did some minor work on its production spinneret to get some higher quality models out, along with a few more quality of life upgrades. I only gave the Mork, Elder and the handful of random alien models from the Dark Elder model line and the TAU line. That should keep them busy for a few years. For now I just wanted to be left alone in my home. I sat within my Blackstone reconstruction of my home from when I was still a human. It's awfully quiet but that's fine for me. Occasionally I run through my siblings and parents rooms. I like to run through memories of my time with them. I remembered everything with crystal clarity. Every birthday with them, reading books in bed, playing on our family switch with my little sister. I feel like I should be crying, but I can't, there isn't any pain, or heartache. It's just this numb longing. I kept milling for weeks at a time. I had scabs recreate most of my RPG books from my memory, thank god I had read over each book cover to cover. Every once in a while I would thumb through a Dungeons and Dragons book, mostly just thinking about the hundreds of sessions I played through. Other times I would simply sit down at the fake monitor and just sit in front of it for hours at a time. I'd project my memories onto the screen from my ocular, just running through text conversations I had with friends from Discord. It had been 69 years since I had become a Necron and I couldn't even laugh at that. I just didn't have the time or focus required to realize how much I lost. When I would get tired of it all I would simply sit on the hard blackstone approximation of my bed and stare at the ceiling. So this is what it's like to be a Necron huh? Eventually after having relieved most of my life over the course of a few months I finally took a seat down on my sofa. Since I learned projecting things through my single eye was a power I had I started watching old Godzilla movies on my living room TV. I had missed watching the newest one. There were so many things I missed out on. Every once in a while a few other of the awakened Necrons or Canoptech constructs would watch the movies with me, even the Cryptex joined me. I didn't mind much, but both the living room and the connected kitchen filled up when I started the Godzilla marathon. It was fine. It was comforting to be around so many folks. After the Godzilla marathon I found more Necrons who wished to watch with us. 
I basically ended up turning the chamber into a movie theater. 775 seats had been made for the entire awakened collection of Necrons to watch old movies with me. We watched the Planet of the Apes movies, Aliens, Star Wars, The Godfather, and to wrap it all up just about every Clint Eastwood movie I had sat through, which was all of them. Close bracket. It didn't really take that long to watch if I'll be honest. But I didn't even know how desperately I needed that bit of normalcy. When the credits rolled the sound of applause filled the chamber. I wish I could cry. After some time I found most immortals lich good in rap discussion about the movies. No one seemed to want to ask directly what they had joined me to watch or even why it happened. I was fine with it. A gaggart was also talking to a large host of lich goods about Star Wars and how it was inspiring a few ideas for the combat simulations. Right double quotation mark. Something about it being a shame that he the Praetorian didn't see. Oh shit he's talking about Battlefleet Gothic, and I think he just admitted to giving her a copy of the game. Huh, wonder if that'll come back to bite me later. Well with movie night over I'm going to head over to Solemnace. Or I would've had it not been for my next unexpected guest. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.